the presentation created especially for this evening by our own Monroe County Dwayne Busick. She's a passionate person about life and she loves the little things. She wants to keep things interesting and she's a protector. She's a giver. She loves her family very much and would travel to the ends of the earth to see them and often does. It is my pleasure to cast 48 votes for the next president of the United States, Hillary Rodham Clinton. The major issue in facing the county government in 1980 was the grand jury found that the courthouse was a fire trap. And the fire marshal walked in to the room and said, where are they? And we said, what do you mean? He said, where are they? I said, I wanted to meet with the county commissioner, the auditor, the county highway engineer, and the county attorney. So where are they? I said, we're it. When he arrived, and was greeted by President of the County Commissioner Charlotte Seatlow, who in turn introduced him to County Auditor Vi Simpson, County Attorney Elizabeth Mann, and County Engineer Christine McFatridge. He said, you're it? Four women? You're it? This is one of the sweetest moments, I think. <laughs> Even beyond his worst dreams, here we are, all four of us women. But we, were, we, we got the job done. Actually. It didn't really occur to me that there were communities that women weren't in power. <laughs> like, women were in power in our house, in our courthouse, and in the state house. I met Vi Simpson for the first time in 1986, and I was asking for advice on running for office. And she gave incredible guidance. And when I was elected, got to serve with her, I, it's hard to believe, for 16 years. Uh, just an, an amazing role model. And coincidentally, was the uh, Sunday school teacher for, for my wife, Sherry. And, uh, and I think the shocking part of that story is, Vi Simpson was a Sunday school teacher. And she sang in the choir there. She had a really nice singing voice. So the Methodists really loved her. She learned to know a lot of people before it became apparent that she was a politically active. And so I, you know, she had already built a kind of base without even realizing she'd done that in a, in a community which is traditionally Republican. But um, she was solid there. She's always instilled in us that there are many more things that we have in common that unite people than divide them. And she focused on those things in Eltsville. And the things that were important to Eltsville, she made sure that those weren't things that were important to her. She was representing them too. Bye Simpson did more as a member of the minority party than most members of the majority party ever did. She was running a business, working pretty much full time, going to school, and she was a leader within her caucus and within the legislature. Things that really affected human being lives, was, she was just terrific in that. My name is Vi Simpson, and I hear, I'm here to support my teachers! The thing she's probably most proud of would be the Children's Health Insurance Program. I know she won some awards because of it, but I mean that she doesn't care about the awards. She was just proud that children were going to be covered. Yeah. She'd probably say her grandchildren are her greatest accomplishment, but three of them live in California. She tries to make a trip for each of their birthdays every single year, so that they know each, each of them is very important to her. And Madam Secretary, we're giving ourselves a present. We're gonna turn Indiana blue one more time. <laughs> Today's dinner isn't just an opportunity to prepare for a coming election this November. It is also an opportunity to celebrate the public service of an individual that has given selflessly to our state and create a lasting legacy within our party. In 2016, our district committee initiated a program to honor individuals that have made a significant and sustaining contribution to public service and our party. While many local parties and our state committee have established such honors, 
There was previously no similar program at the district level. Our former Congressman Lee Hamilton agreed that this honor was, miss, was a missing link in our program and was quite honored by our insistence that the creation of an award should bear his name. Lee's service to our state and nation has served as an example for generations of community leaders. In fact, it was Lee's help for my own father after a horrible accident at the Air National Guard that impacted my personal family and ultimately led me to taking those bags around in parades at five years old. And thus the Lee H. Hamilton Public Service Award was born. The Hamilton Award is crafted here in the 9th District by skilled union craftsmen at Bruce Fox in New Albany, Indiana. The sleek, elegant design bears the likeness of Lee Hamilton and reminds us of the steadfast devotion required by our community and public servants. Our first two honorees, Wayne Vance, who happens to be with us today. Let's give him a round of applause. And Judy O'Bannon Wilsley had served in public and political service humbly, working to raise other individuals up and fight for those that often could not fight for themselves. Tonight, we honor a third individual who has been a tireless advocate for Hoosiers. Vice Simpson has a resume and a list of awards and accomplishments that would take quite a while to read. I'm not going to do that tonight. The video expressed the spirit. But as we've witnessed from that video tribute, Vi has been a guiding star for our party and our state, as well as her own family and friends. As the first woman to lead the state budget committee and to be elected as the leader of the Senate Democratic Caucus, she has been a trailblazer and a role model ensuring that the next generation, and particularly the next generation of young women, has the opportunity to lead throughout all realms of life. She worked to make health care more affordable and accessible to all Hoosiers. She led the fight to restructure the state's economy, and she's been a tireless advocate for improving Indiana's public schools and universities. Today, she continues her public service through Hoosier Women Forward, a leadership program for women in our state. Vi herself said it best, the most important thing I do is making sure that young women have doors to walk through and that we open opportunity for the next generation of leaders in all realms of life. It is now with great pride that we call forward Vi Simpson for the presentation of the Lee H. Hamilton Public Service Award. I'm going to try and not cry, but it's hard. Well, as you heard, my name is Vi Simpson, but Many of you don't know that that's a nickname. My real name is Viola Omarosa. <laughs> and through this bizarre coincidence, I happen to have about 200 videotapes of John Gregg. <laughs> Most of them are, about, are, are of him and me 
discussing infrastructure <laughs> and the budget, but some of them are kind of fun. I might leave them later. But if you think that's hot, you should hear some of the tapes I have of Lee Hamilton. <laughs> Thank you to all of you here tonight and to all of those friends and folks who supported me all those years in the Ninth District. You were always there for me. The Ninth District was the first district to endorse me when I ran for governor a million years ago. And, um, and I just can't thank you enough. You really sent me on my way. To all the county chairs and central committee members for all the counties, past and present, since the ninth district has changed so much over the years, especially those folks in Monroe and Brown counties, Green and Owen counties, you really started me down the path. To my family, a couple of them you saw up there on the screen, in fact you saw them all I think. Um, my children, as they were growing up, took turns walking precincts with me and passing out things and walking in those parades, Lee, when they were little. They even stood at a precinct with Mark Cruzan for a whole day when they were very, very small. And I think you lost one of my children once, didn't you? <laughs> Just once, he said. My husband, I told him if he cried, I would cry, and, then he, and I hope you don't. <laughs> Who always supported my decisions when I was out there putting my name on the ballot and taking risks that no sane person would have taken. And my friends and supporters and staff people over the years, a lot of you were here. I just can't thank you enough. You know, it wasn't always easy to be uh, an Indiana Democrat. You probably know that too especially a progressive Democrat, especially a progressive Democrat who happens to be a woman, and especially a female progressive Democrat from Bloomington, Indiana, who believes that health care is a human right. <laughs> and that women should have the right to choose and that our children and their public schools should be our first priority. <laughs> and that civil rights for every person is fundamental. <laughs> and when you're an Indiana Democrat, it feels like you're in a fight every single day. Yes? Sometimes it was hard. But you'll remember Tom Hanks saying in the League of, Earth, of, of Their Own that the hard is what makes it great. And it has been great. Every time I got discouraged, and there were a lot of those times, there was somebody in this room who could lift me up. Somebody in this room who could re-energize me, who gave me purpose. And I can't thank you enough for that. I remember that this party, the party of Roosevelt and Kennedy and Carter and Obama and Clinton, and yes, Lee Hamilton, is the best agent of change for millions of Hoosiers. And, and for hundreds of millions of Americans who hunger for opportunity and thirst for equality. And those principles are bigger than partisanship and more powerful than any president. And our cause, Democrats, has never been more urgent than it is today. Which brings me to my friend Lee Hamilton. This award 
honors the Indiana story of a man who, over the course of an extraordinary career, made so many other Indiana stories possible. And I'm one of those stories, Lee. Everyone here knows Lee Hamilton as a statesman and a role model, but I was lucky because he just lived the county over. And to me, he was a mentor. He picked me out when I was just first running for office and took me to some VIP shindig. And they all wanted to know how it was I won, how I won an election in 1980 when Ronald Reagan swept every possible election. I was lucky, and I can't tell you how profoundly special it is to me to be honored with an award in your name. So thank you so much for all those years of advice and counsel. Now, Lee, today you and I are party elders. Is that what they call us? And to some of these young people in the room, we probably look like those two old guys in the balcony in the Muppets movie. <laughs> but I believe what Robert Kennedy said, and it's even truer today, this world demands the qualities of youth, not a time of life, but a state of mind, a temper of the will, a quality of imagination, a predominance of courage over timidity, of the appetite for adventure over the life of ease. So, I'm taking his advice, and I'm not running off into the sunset just yet. Not as long as our children and our grandchildren's future is being threatened by a leader who is so cruel and corrupt and compromised and chaotic and clueless. Not as long as the Republican Party has lost its way and sold its soul to a president without one. And not as long as our nation's perception of Indiana is embodied by a vice president who was once America's worst governor. <laughs> who was once America's worst governor and is now Donald Trump's most insufferable apologist. I pledge to you I'm going to still be here kicking butt as long as Mike Pence keeps kissing Trump's. <laughs> for office a long time ago to help make Indiana a better place for the next generation. And that includes the next generation of Democrats. And that's why I continue to serve. I'm on the board of Emerging Leaders as a director of Hoosier Women Forward and on the board of the Democrat Women's Caucus Political Action Committee in Monroe County. Each of those organizations they're similar in a way because they're focused on developing new and young people. Young people who can continue our work as candidates and as office holders and as the next generation of volunteers and the next generation of fighters. Fighters for this party and fighters for the cause that we hold dear. Every day we have plenty of opportunities to get angry, frustrated, even offended. We're reminded every day why elections matter, why justice and equity and empathy and facts and science and free speech and, yes, a free press, why they all matter. 
and why we can't watch from the sidelines, none of us. We need to lead from the front lines. I look around this room and I see many of you who have shared many of my experiences and fought the same battles that I have fought. And now it's our responsibility to do what we can to teach, to inspire, to mentor, to prepare the next group of fighters for the cause. As Democrats, we know that America is not a gilded tower of exclusivity and entitlement. It's not a zero-sum game where I win only if you lose. We are a mutually dependent melting pot of ambition and innovation and community and compassion. Americans by birth and Americans by choice, interwoven and ascending together, overcoming biases and borders. Millions of us, millions of us, connected by one dream, connected to be whoever you want to be and whatever you want to be. So my friends, if Trump is the question, the answer is us. To use a cliche, we're the dawn after the dark. And for the world's sake, that sun is circling back in our direction. Thank goodness. And I don't need to tell you, there is a lot of work yet to do. We have some great state candidates running for state offices, and those state offices are so important. I can't even begin to tell you how important they are. I can say three words. Board of Finance, that's why we need Democrats elected to the Auditor's Office and the Treasurer's Office. And I've got two words for you, voting rights, and that's why we need a Democrat in the Secretary of State's Office. And we've got great local candidates running for the State House running for the courthouse, all up and down the, the ballot, and you all know who they are. It's not easy being a candidate. It's a big risk you take when you put your name on the ballot. And we all know the work we have to do to get Liz Watson elected to Congress. And we're this close. We are this close, 9th District. We can do it. You know, I know it's easy to get dragged down by the Washington, D.C. rabbit hole. Righteous anger and divicity. To get distracted by the casual obstructions of justice, the dog whistle racism, the coddling of despots, the indulgence of, indulging of abusers. We get angry, we get afraid, and we get tired. But someone very wise once said, the past cannot be changed, but the future, that's right in our hands. The future belongs to us. My whole political life, and I shared much of that with Mark Cruzan, and I'm so pleased that he's here tonight, I've encountered cynics and skeptics, some even within our own party. Sometimes they offered pessimism when passion was needed. I was never short on the passion part. Sometimes they seek moderation when a little bit of disruption was required. When I was a senator, I often got told, and I know Mark did too, we need to, you need to pick your battles. I wanted to give everyone the equal right to marry, and I got told to pick your battles. I wanted guaranteed health care for everyone, and they told me, 
You pick your battles. I wanted a public school system that treated teachers and as working partners instead of sparring partners. And they told me to pick my battles. I wanted to protect the rights of labor unions to organize and give all of us a path to prosperity. And they told me to pick my battles. Well, I picked my battles. I picked all the battles. <laughs> because they're our battles and because my dad used to tell me it's never a wrong time to do the right thing as Democrats we've never succeeded by playing it safe if we did if we played it safe we wouldn't have had Medicare or Social Security or the Civil Rights Act or environmental protections or the Affordable Care Act we're Democrats we're where the power is, because that's where the people are. And this is our calling. Progress through progressivism. But we can only achieve it if we have the courage to demand it from our leaders and from ourselves. So, with gratitude and great optimism for the future, I thank you, 9th District, for this great honor and for all the dreams we've made real together, and for all those, and, and for all, <laughs> so I did pretty well. For the, <clears throat> for all the dreams we've made real together, mm -hmm. and for all of those still unanswered, I'm going to ask you one more time, don't lose faith, never back down, dream very big and demand much, much more from your leaders and keep fighting for our future. We're counting on you. Let's hear it again for Bye Simpson! <laughs>